ワールドチャンピオンとなったドジャースパドレス戦メッツ戦そしてワールドシリーズのヤンキース戦と激闘が繰り広げられましたロバーツ監督がムキー・ベッツ選手がホストを務めるウォンベースにゲスト出演しそれぞれの試合を振り返りその時の感情や決断について語っていました I am your host, Mookie Betts, and today you know we have a lot of very special、uh, guests today but today there, this, is, this guy is near and dear to my heart I mean and you're, this is the first episode、uh, with the manager we got Dave Roberts. I want to give you,、uh, I don't even know all, all the accolades, but one big,、uh, big change for you is you are a three time.、Uh, you were a two time because one playing and now and one managing, but now you have two managing. Three time World Series champion. How does that feel, Doc? Mook, it, it's unbelievable.、Um, first off, you know, to be、uh, on base, it feels good to be back on base, <laughs> right?、Um, this has been a player forum for you.、Um, and yeah, To, to be able to win it as a, as a player、um, and then to win two as a manager, I think I'm, I'm in an elite、uh, class right now. So okay, that's so which one's harder?、Thing. Which one's harder? I think as a manager, it's harder. Why?、Um, I, I think,、uh, you know, you can kind of, for you, the, the pressure of being a real dude, a superstar player, and what that entails. Um, I didn't have that. I was a role player as a player. So to come in and help support a ball club, win a championship is something special. It's your focus on yourself and your performance, which you need to be.、Mm -hmm. As a manager, there's just a lot more things that are under your watch. And so that's why I think for me it's harder, but it's a lot more gratifying to see you, know, you thrive, Freddie thrive, and see the coaches, the front office, and The, the fans, and, and you just kind of more in tune with a lot more as, as a manager. That, that makes sense. That's why、uh, managing is hard. So,、uh, but we'll get to that、um, here soon. First, I want to play、uh, a game called On Base, Off, off Base, whether you're in or out. All right. Ooh, all right. First thing is you could go on tour with Ice Cube <laughs> as a backup dancer.、Uh... Did you see your moves? Have you seen the video、so、of you dancing? I think I blacked out. <laughs> And、uh, when, he, when, he, when he said,、uh, that was my ass dropping right there. Oh, that was the ass dropping. So、okay. that was my ass dropping right there. You didn't get、right、that low, though, Doc. So I know, no, because I got a bad knee. So I, <laughs> I, I still know my limits. But man, I would love to go on tour with Ice Cube. I'm telling you, Mookie, this was like, it took me back to 1988. When I had a Nissan Sentra, a red Sentra, and I had my two tens in like a, a wood box. Because that's、okay. what you did back in the day. You used to get a box made, you used to put your woofers in the trunk, and your license plate would be beaten up and、oh, racking、yeah. and making、oh, all that、yeah. noise. But man, I would listen to NWA and Ice Cube all day long, and so that kind of took me back. Man, I could tell. You look good. I'm, I'm on base with that. Okay, so what about this one? Last one. A decoy should be the official mascot of the Dodgers. On base. I'm on base on that too. On base. That, that, I've never seen a dog act the way that dog. It, it's the perfect dog of all time. No, it, and the thing is, is that I'll tell you, that's where Shohei, as we see this picture of decoy and Shohei, that Shohei is just like as comfortable. Uh, in his own skin when he's with that dog.、Mm -hmm. And you know what?、Uh, my daughter told me the other day, she was like, You know what I think is that when Shohei has decoy, it takes the attention off him. Oh, it puts、and、it on him. And so、decoy. it allows、okay. him to sort of like let people just focus on decoy. So to the point, your point, I'm on base with decoy being our mascot. Yeah, I'm with it. I think we, uh, we, uh, we just get. Just get a, 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 a costume of him made, and someone should play decoy, you know, all the time. All the travel time. Travel with us and, and whatnot.、Yeah. You know, like the fanatic. You know, like fanatic. the fanatic. We、and、need decoy, though. For, for decoy to learn how to deliver a first pitch、yeah. in like two weeks, that's unprecedented. <laughs> so if he can do that, dog that is. decoy can lead us to a, another championship. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> okay, all right. So enough of that game. What about this? I want to、uh, take me through that, those. Those 10, 15, 20 seconds of Walker striking out the last guy immediately after. Did the weight just fall off your shoulders? What was it? You know what? I, I, it was、uh, 
when we won it in 20, it was like relief and I couldn't even enjoy it. But this one, when Walker punched out Verdugo, it was pure joy, elation, and I'm still enjoying it, Mook. Yeah. I I'm telling you, and it's like, we've had all these haters and tell us this or that and the other and all this noise that I always try to, you know, get you guys to block out. And, and so once he uh, str made that last pitch, um, I just re look to the skies and look to my father who's resting peacefully up there in heaven and I, I'm just I couldn't be happier. I want to I want to talk about that that playoff series there or not even that series but the whole playoffs really going in late into the season we're still playing so that that was a, a, a good change for us because we the last couple years we got put out early but we had won the uh, division kind of early a little bit and we sh shut it down and so this time we're going in still playing we really get i ain't gonna say one series off but it was just the last series and we're going to got san diego and they Oof. they they really kicked their ass all year all year so what were you how were you feeling about it from the, your I, perspective i felt from my perspective that was the world series um i felt that at that moment in time when we started the postseason, they were one through 26, the best team. 100%. And we're no longer afraid of us. Mm -hmm. um, we're familiar. They beat us up in the in the regular season. So um, they were hungry. They hadn't won a championship. So I felt that that was going to be our biggest challenge, especially in a short series. And so when we got down 2-1. Um, and we had already gotten put out the last two years, so that was already way That's right. That was already extra. a burden that we had to, yeah. to deal with. And so for me, that was the World Series. And so out of a lot of my angst and, and nerves were, were into that series. And then down 2-1, like you said, I want to hear from your, your perspective, from, but from my perspective, it seemed like a regular day in July. Like there was no panic. You were still being yourself. The guys were still laughing, hanging out. But everybody was in intense, like, you know, making sure they take care of their, their business. But it didn't, I didn't feel any panic going on going on around the, the clubhouse. And I feel like that played a part, but I did feel intensity. But I want to hear from your perspective what I, you felt. I, I think that I, I agree. I, I did feel the focus. Uh, there wasn't panic, certainly. I think that when we went in there two years ago, I think that there was a little bit of, we were overwhelmed by the environment. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, it was mayhem, it was crazy down there, it was loud, and um, they fed off of that, as most teams feed off the home crowd. I just felt though in game four, we were ready, and, and you and I had talked about it, we were ready to brawl, and we were gonna find a way to, to win that game. And we did. And I just think that they're kind of... And that was a bullpen game. It was a bullpen game. It was a bullpen game. And I just think that the way they go about things is a street fight and they try to intimidate. And we were up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. And we took their best shot and counterpunched. And um, we got big hits, big performances. And I just think from that point on, Mook, the confidence in you your teammates, the organization, the fans just continue to grow. And then once we got to game five and we took that lead, I just felt that those guys had no answer for us. Yeah, that, yeah, that was, uh, and then our guys were, it's like everybody was just locked in, man. Locked everybody in. was just locked in. And it's like, it's crazy though, is that like when you see talent and then you see the group locked in together and you know that they're not scared and they're going to fight back. And so we go in and, and we play the Mets, which I felt like was a much less emotional series for us. Like coming down, come, just playing the Padres, it felt more like regular baseball is, is wrong, but the Padres series felt like an emotional battle. Maybe like winter ball. I've never played winter ball, but the emotions back and forth, the pimping of homers, the pimping of strikeouts, the 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 knowledge of each other felt like winter ball a, a little bit. And then 
you going into the Mets, it felt like, okay, this is, we got to re, relearn who we're playing against. It's a different style of ball. I don't know. I wonder if you're I, from your I, I perspective. I love that. I love that. And not even to mention all the stuff that went on with the fans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, Profar in the stands and then the stuff with Machado. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. it, it yeah. was like yeah. a winter ball kind of, exactly. you know, gloves are off. We're doing whatever it takes to get a competitive advantage. The psyche part of mm -hmm. it all played a part in that. And yeah. We're going into a different series and trying to figure out what's the best way to prepare for the Mets. But this is a team that was the best team in the second half in all of baseball. Mm -hmm. You know, they were living with this uh, this whole gremlin thing or whatever the heck they yeah. had going on <laughs> that uh, they were trying to vibe off that. Yeah. But I think for us, it was a different type series, but certainly not even close as emotional. No, it wasn't. And But it, w it was fun. And then... Going in, uh, you know, we played well there. And then going into the Yankee series, we go up 3-0, which was crazy in itself. And then we lose game four. And then we, we're down 5 nothing, game five, right? I mean, everything before then is kind of, you know, whatever. But now we're down nothing, game five. And you have a unique perspective because you've been on the other side, down 3 or down 0-3. And you won a game. And now being on the Dodger, you're down five nothing. And you've been on the other side like smelling blood, like we gotta go, we gotta go. So I wanna hear both sides because being down five oh there, I'm like, okay, I don't wanna go back to LA. If we have to, cool. But like we gotta figure out something. And you you manage that game differently. And so I did, Mook. And because I have been on the other side of it. And when you're down 3-0, you're at the point where you have nothing to lose now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who was favored, um, who wasn't. When you're down 3-0, everyone is expecting you to lose anyway. And I will tell you this, now publicly, I was so afraid to come back to Los Angeles for game six, knowing we still had Yamamoto in our back pocket. But the point being is that if we were to come back, the noise, the pressure becomes real. Mm -hmm. Because then you're gonna start potentially being uh, 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 you know, part of history in, in the wrong way, mm -hmm. a team that gave up a three nothing, because it's never been done in the World Series. We did it in the ALCS, the Yankees versus the Red Sox. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was the fear of going back. So to your point, yes, I managed with urgency. Even when we were down 5-0, I didn't know how we were gonna finish this dang game. And going in through that game, you get to the fifth inning, and, you know, I, I've talked about it, but from a managing perspective, I want to hear your perspective on how that fifth inning played out. I just felt that we're down 5-0, and as that fifth inning started, I'm, truth be told, I'm really trying to think about how to really best equip ourselves for game six, um, because they were gonna have to exhaust everything. And Cole was shoving. And Cole was shoving. I mean, at that point in time, he had a no hitter. Yeah. And so he was shoving. And so for me, Kike leads off with a base hit. Tommy hits a, a you know, an, a, a non-assuming, unassuming fly ball and it gets dropped. And then there's a ball that's not play, that's not made off Will Smith's bat in the hole. And it's like, uh-oh. And here you come up and you leg out. And the thing is that that's what people don't get is that Kike makes a turn around, mm -hmm. bends it to make it a little bit more difficult play for Volpe. And if you go back and you watch that play, that's a very heady baseball play. And another one for you is you cue the ball off the end of the bat, but instead of putting your head down and being upset with yourself, you run a hard 90 and the game honored you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I talk a lot about. So those are things that, yeah, they caused some trouble for themselves, but we took advantage of for the way we play baseball, right? And so as you guys started clawing your way back, my thought now shifted to they fought their way back. I've got to now be all in on how I manage the rest mm -hmm. of this game. And, and yeah, because it went from, oh, you know, I got to prepare how we're going to look for game six to we can win this one. And so that a lot of your decisions change at that point. Then Freddie gets a hit and it's first and third and Teo's up. Tell me your perspective on, on Teo because, you know, 
I, I played with Teo since we were in, I was in Boston. He was in Toronto. Wow. And which is a long time. And he, you know, we've been, been together for a while and seeing the progression of Teo, seeing what he was to like a, a, a fast, you know, didn't hit for power much, really had a lot of swing and miss in his game, but he's a good player. To now, this is Teoscar. Ooh. I want to hear like your perspective on 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 what he meant for us. I, I think it, it starts from the beginning in the sense of my beginning with Teo as far as betting on himself. I said it in spring training, this is a man that left a lot of money on the table to be in a place where he wanted to be, Los Angeles, to be around players like yourself so he can learn and get better. And there's nothing more powerful than betting on yourself and making sacrifices, whatever it might be. Money, time, family. And that's what Teo did. And so right there, he earned my respect from the get-go. And then from that point on, I've just really never been around a guy who is that mentally consistent on the daily. Every single day, uh, good, bad, and different, he comes in as the same guy. And I just knew that a guy like that, you can count on in the biggest of spots. And, like, and that's he what he did. He probably was just chilling. He was. He probably was just in the box, just like, I don't even care. No, you're even right. Even though he cares, he's a of dog, course. right? But like, but that, that's know? like something that anyone can tell themselves that that's how they want to be. But there's something innate with Teo in that heartbeat mm -hmm. just doesn't rise too much where he starts to panic and get nervous. And man, he came up and he Ooh, hit it. One, two slider, one. good pitch, two outs, two strikes. And I mean, we, Freddie's hit was was huge, but that was, I mean, that put us ahead. And when uh, we, the game is tied, tied there. The game. Yeah, tied, tied the, the game. game. And now it's the fifth inning. Is that like from a manager perspective, because I want to know, is that like, okay, I have to completely, I, I need a second to completely flip my brain into thinking about how I'm going to get us through this. Absolutely. Because you can even look back and, and, and as people will go back, you know, I, I brought in Banda earlier and he couldn't go as long as I had hoped. So then I, I had to, I Money couldn't Mike extend well. him. And, and and I brought in Kopi. He couldn't go longer. So, and then also the other one was we had Bazooka, Gratterall, and that was a first and second base, two outs. I felt that at that point in time, that was the game. So I brought in Trinan right there to get Volpe. And so I just felt that Bazooka did everything he could possibly do for us. I had to stop the momentum because the postseason, as I've been fortunate enough as you, we've been a part of a lot of postseasons and the postseason is about momentum. And if you look at all these games from the DS to the CS to the World Series, I tried to do everything in my power to stop the momentum and then not let the other team gain momentum. And so right there, bringing in Blake, but then at that point in time, honestly, Mookie, I didn't know how I was gonna finish that game and still knowing I had Walker potentially in my back pocket, but that's only for one inning in a plus game. So you, so Trinan, really, really Trinan was kind of it. He was it. And that's how, and so when you went out and talked to him and where did you think about taking him out? Were you thinking about taking him out? No. So I, you went out. I didn't have a choice. He was saying, he was going to stay in that game. <laughs> so at that point in time, uh, there was nothing. I didn't do anything good right there. What I did do is I tried to slow the moment down. Mm -hmm. And I tried to give him a breath. And I wanted to put hands on him. As you, as you know, mm -hmm. I like to put hands on people. So I'm out there. I put both my hands on his chest. And I wanted to look him in the eye. And I wanted to look him in the eye like I did right there and said, hey, man, what do you got? You got any more in there? And he said, this is my guy. I want Stan. Mm. And so the interesting thing is I was expecting Daniel Hudson to be ready at that for the next hitter Rizzo because he had already thrown close to 40 pitches. And I'm also trying to be mindful of a player's health. And then so after he gets Stanton to pop up, Mook, I'm waiting for him to look at me because there's only one pitch. But I mm -hmm. did tell him one hitter. And so he didn't look at me because if he looked at me, I was going to go get him. Mm. 
He did not look at me. I'm on the top step, and then Freddie is at first base, subtly, respectfully, moving his glove like, let him get him, let him get him. Oh, wow, let him so get Freddie him. played a part so in this. So Freddie played a part in this. And then, so you know what? I looked at Freddie. Blake didn't look at me, and I go, the right decision is to stand down and let him get him. So would you have before, in years prior, would you have went and got him no matter what? In years prior, I would have got him no matter what. And why? why is that because of a, is that just like a... a it's not, a, not it's a, more of a feel thing. Okay. It's more of a feel thing. And I just felt that I just, he was, for me... And no disrespect to anybody else, I just felt in that moment we were gonna live or die with Blake Trinan mm -hmm. on the mound, and I just want—I had to trust him. And you've went through making the right decision, making the wrong decision, so it's not like one of those things. It was just what you felt in that time, and what you felt in that time was was right with him. Yeah, that, and then, that's right. That's and, right. And then you know, going in, no matter what, Walker Buehler has a ninth. How'd you feel about that? I just felt that no matter what, with a lead, Walker was going to have the night. And how did you feel about running him out there with one up one? Especially I, I, with the way he had been pitching. With the way he'd been pitching, I felt really good about it. But again, I was willing to take on the cost of a potential game seven by running Walker out there. Mm -hmm. um, he wanted it. Uh, he's been there before. And honestly, I just felt right then that was our best option to win the World Series. And we did. The Kitoses Chotin, Nitata Bakari, no robots, Kantok to Bet Session of Kotobao Kitir Dakede, Anosoresore no series no Atsishin, Gasenbe to Moyukan de Kimasta, Padores Sen of World Series no Yoda to Shatte Katori Kihaku Gashobu no series to Nari, Kantok Karamo Sono Atsui Kimochigat Tawat de Kimasta, De Koiva Dosas no Shori or Yobikomu Imezi character to Naruto Idesne, Off Season, Wakarada Oyashi Matarai Season, no Atsishia Yotano Siminis Tamas. 